on this vehicle I switched from rear drum brakes to rear disc brakes so I got to looking at this master cylinder and I saw it was leaking so it's leaking out of the back of the seal so I'm getting ready to replace this and I will show you how that is done so what I have here is a master cylinder assembly comprised of a reservoir cover the reservoir itself and then a reservoir diaphragm which is made to these little pop outs once when the fluid starts going down they automatically pop it to fill the air gap that way you don't suck any air around the lip because brake fluid is very hygroscopic which means it absorbs water very easily and you don't want water in your brake fluid because it doesn't work very well and on the end we have the lock ring that holds everything in the primary piston assembly and there's a secondary seal there's a spring retainer a primary seal a secondary piston a secondary piston spring and then a cylinder body itself first thing i want to do is remove this cover and then the reservoir diaphragm i'm going to use this tool here it's a vacuum pump and it works pretty good and then put this clear hose in and then just pump it out and it'll all go in this container right here I'll try to put a link to one of these pumps in the description okay. what you don't want to do is get brake fluid on your paint because brake fluid brake fluid will eat the paint off of a car that is not good so you notice I've got me a fender cover here and I'm holding the tube down in the reservoir and being very careful not to splash it. Now this vacuum pump is used for many other applications. Uh, it's also got a pressure switch on it. You want to make sure that the pressure switch is turned to vacuum so you don't blow air through there. I'll put this cap back on to keep any fluid from splashing out whenever I take these lines loose. Next, I'm going to take a line wrench. See the difference in a line wrench and a regular wrench? These nuts right here on this line will strip real easily. So it definitely helps to use a good line wrench. And I'll just use this to break them loose. So these lines here were 9 sixteenths but the nuts that hold the master cylinder to the booster are 15 millimeter, which is just a little bit bigger than a 9 16. There's where it's been leaking. Now it's time to bench bleed the new master cylinder, but I've got it mounted in a vise and I've got the fittings. Actually what I did was this came with two plugs and there's two different ways you can do this. Um, I'm going to use these plugs. I do have some fittings somewhere that actually you can put a hose in the center and come out to the top. And when you feel the reservoir, you can see the air bubbles coming out and going in to the new fluid. I'm going to do it this way. And it'll work just fine. What you want to do is make sure you got this in the vise really good and tight. It's going to take the top off and fill it up because there's air inside the cylinder here. We want to get that air out. When it comes to hydraulics, hydraulics and air don't mix very well. Here's where you want to push in. I'm using this old dull punch because it helps me to stay centered. Then I'm just pushing it in inch, inch and a half or so. And then eventually you start to see the reservoir goes down. Whenever you're pressing that in, you want to go kind of easy. Otherwise, uh, it's going to splash out. You can see the air bubbles coming up. So you just want to push it in real easy. Then you can also get a good look on the air bubbles. Um, and it won't be just shooting fluid everywhere. You want to go in about an inch, inch and a half. And eventually... You'll see the air bubbles kind of stop and the fluid level goes down. There we go. 
So once the air bubble stop, you know that it's bled. It's looking pretty good right there. We put the cap back on. Now we're ready to remove it from the vise and take it over to the vehicle. So to go back together with it, you just take the master cylinder, slide it on the studs, and put the nuts on and torque them to factory specifications. Next thing you want to do is take the plug out. And I'm doing them one at a time to keep from making a mess. But you want to put the line in. Start it by hand. Don't ever use a wrench on these because they will strip out. And then you want to use a line wrench to tighten it snug. Next, I'm going to top off the brake fluid. And the reason why I said just to snug those line nuts is because I'm going to break them loose again. They actually do have a torque spec on those. It's like 12 foot pounds. You have to use a crow's foot. I'm going to see if I have one of those to show you. I got the reservoir cap back in place. And here's some of those crow's foot that I was talking about. You actually use these on a torque wrench. That one's seen better days, but this still works. And you, But you put it on a torque wrench, and then you put it on there, and then torque it to the proper torque, which is on this particular one is 12 foot pounds. I push the brake pedal in and I've got a pry bar holding brake push down and then I'm just going to loosen these one at a time and then I'll probably hear a little bit of air come out and then that's going to complete the bleeding of the master cylinder. All right I did get a little bit of air but after that it was just running fluid and so I'm set to go and bleed all four brake lines now going to the calipers. So that's how you replace the master cylinder on a vehicle. The next step you're going to have to go and bleed each brake caliper one at a time and what you're going to do is start on the right rear have somebody go inside the car press down on the brake pedal real slowly and hold it loosen the right rear brake caliper bleeder screw first and then retighten it and then repeat the process to the left rear and then go to the right front and the left front so i've had to go through about three different times and repeat that process until i got all the air out of the system because you definitely don't want any air in a brake system because it doesn't work very well so get all the air out and then uh, take it for a test drive. You should be just fine, but make sure you get all the bleeder screws tight. It helps to use a, a if you have a six point box in wrench, that works really well. Otherwise, you don't wanna strip the screw. So just be kind of careful on when you do tighten it and make sure your wrench is on there really solid. And don't use the open end. Uh, those screws do strip really easy. So recheck your brake fluid level and you might have to do this two or three times to get all the air out of the system because you definitely don't want any air in a brake system. So if you like this video, click like. If you like to see future videos, click subscribe and also hit the bell notification. I'll be posting more how-to videos. Anyway, good luck to you. And if you have any questions or comments, give me a question down below or a comment.